Alright, what is up you guys? I'm here with the WrestleMania 14 review. This was obviously held in Boston, Massachusetts. And, you know, obviously the Attitude Era started in 97, but I feel like with this pay-per-view, this is what kicked the Attitude Era off into high gear. Like, this is where it evolved into the Attitude Era that we know, and rest in peace, Winged Eagle Championship. That's all I have to say about that. That is probably the best looking WWF title ever. So, to kick things off, we had LOD 2000, and, um, which was Animal and Hawk, with Sonny accompanying them. This is a tag team battle royal to determine the number one contenders for the tag team titles. So, you know, this was your average tag team battle royal. You know, it's not how I would have started WrestleMania off. I think it's more... I think it's one of those matches that's kind of like second or third match. You know, I would have kicked it off with maybe Michinoku. But... Or even like Triple H and Owen Hart. That would have been a good kickoff. But it is what it is. This is, you know, your regular battle royal with your stipulation added to it. Which can make it a little more entertaining, but... This match did kind of fall flat a little bit. It's just kind of there and very, very forgotten. Honestly, the most iconic picture that came out of this was LOD 2000 making their entrance. So, next up we had Michinoku and Ogula for the light heavyweight title. This went 5 minutes and 57 seconds. This is one of those matches I have never, I legit have never heard anyone talk about this match ever. Unless it's like an in-depth review. These are two very forgotten wrestlers. And they hold their own in this. You know, they deserve to be on the WrestleMania card. I firmly believe that. And, you know, depending on your thoughts on the light heavyweight title, you know, it's just... It's a good singles match for the, you know, lower end of the card. And then we have Triple H versus Owen Hart for the European Championship. And, you know, uh, Triple H did have China accompanying him. And Owen Hart actually got a cast off before this match. So, you know, props to him. And I'm glad to see Owen Hart in a singles match at WrestleMania. You know, we had WrestleMania 10, of course. But, you know, like I said in the previous reviews, well, I'm going to say them in the next few reviews, that, you know, I feel like Owen Hart deserved more one-on-one -on -one matches at WrestleMania. And that's the case with WrestleMania 12 and 13. So, you know, he was in tag matches. It's good to see Owen Hart holding his own here. You know, this was Triple H really getting into that game character with China with him. So this was um, it's a good European title match. It went 11 minutes and 29 seconds. Next we had Mark Marrow and Sable versus the artist formerly known as Goldust and Luna Vachon. And Luna was actually threatened. Here's a little fun fact. She was threatened that if Sable got injured, she would be fired on the spot. So no pressure at WrestleMania. And, you know, I love Gold Dust, and I love this gimmick. You know, it's kind of the take on the artist formerly known as Prince. But, you know, this was your mixed tag team match. It went 9 minutes and 11 seconds. This is enjoyable. Um... Uh, you know, I wasn't really the biggest Mark Marrow or Sable fan. You know, this was when they were... Yeah. So, you know, it's just... I never thought Sable really brought anything to the table. She is literally the female Brock Lesnar of the 90s, which worked out in both of their favor. So, you know, I love Goldust at this moment in time, you know, back in 98. And, you know, I think... You know, I love early days of Gold Dust, but I really like this as well. Just playing on that kind of different factor. Like, it's something you really haven't seen in wrestling with the artist formerly known as Gold Dust. So, you know, it's your enjoyable tag team match. And, you know, this had, you know, this was a decent run of matches here. Michinoku was good. You know, Triple H and Owen Hart was good. This mixed tag match was good. And then we had The Rock defeating Ken Shamrock by disqualification. By now, you know my opinions about disqualifications at WrestleMania. 
I'm not a fan. This was for the Intercontinental Championship, and it went 4 minutes and 49 seconds. But the disqualification was kind of worth it because Ken Shamrock literally just started flipping out and suplexing referees, which the referees were actually played by indie wrestlers. So, you know, referees take bumps, but not bumps like that a lot of the times. So they actually hired indie wrestlers to play the referees. You know, it only went under five minutes, but it was kind of worth it just to see the freak out at the end. And The Rock was... Uh, accompanied by The Nation, Mark Henry, Kama Mustafa, and D'Lo Brown. Next up we have Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie, a.k.a. Terry Funk, uh, defeating the New Age Outlaws in the dumpster match for the Tag Team Championship. So, um, the original plan, I know Mick Foley had, you know, he came to Vince and he kind of had this idea for... Um, a match with Chainsaw Charlie one-on-one, -on -one, basically a hardcore street fight type match, or a death match, I guess you want to call it, because um, it's more of a death match over street fight, but, you know, obviously they went with the New Age Outlaws, and this isn't a bad match, it's uh, 10 minutes and one second, you know, I think I would have preferred to see that one-on-one -on -one match, but in the end, still enjoyable. I mean, it's the dumpster match in the Attitude Era, so what do you really expect? And then we had The Undertaker versus Kane. This went 17 minutes and 5 seconds. This match was really a year in the making. And, um, you know, you had Paul Bearer out there as well. And, you know, it's often said that one of the greatest stories... In wrestling was Undertaker and his brother Kane and you know it is if you go back and just look at the promos the stories the vignettes the packages this is a great storyline and it's cool to see it culminate at Wrestlemania you know this was a good match but I wouldn't say it was worth the storyline this match could have been better you know this may have been Undertaker's best streak match up to this point, WrestleMania 14, you know, it definitely gave Undertaker and Kane time to shine. I love 97, 98 Kane, late 90s Kane. I love that. Even early 2000s Kane, you know, he was the unstoppable monster. And, you know, to have this Undertaker and Kane, you know, great storyline build up. I just feel like the match, it didn't really fall flat. It was just your, it's what you expected. It wasn't, it didn't exceed expectations. We had like five tombstones throughout the whole match, which can kind of mess with the pacing a bit. But overall, it's enjoyable, but I feel like it's really missing a few things. And then next up we have, of course, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Shawn Michaels, the infamous Undertaker threatening Shawn Michaels if he didn't put over Stone Cold. Undertaker was ready. He was ready to go, but, you know, of course we had Mike Tyson going into this. That was kind of the big selling point of this pay-per-view. And then, you know, one of the most watched pieces of film from WrestleMania history is Tyson knocking out Shawn Michaels. And, you know, this is what kicked off the Austin era. This is what I consider the Attitude Era going into full motion. You know, like I said, the Attitude Era was prominent at this point, but this is when it became the Attitude Era that we all know. And, you know, this match went around 20 minutes, and, you know, it's a good match. You know, it's not just known for the ending. You know, this was Shawn Michaels' final time competing in the ring until 2002. So it's kind of, it was kind of seen, not really necessarily as the retirement farewell match, but a lot of people knew. So, overall, this is a very entertaining main event. You know, it's very book, overly booked, which at the time was popular because of the Attitude Era. So, you know, seeing Stone Cold win the WWF title at WrestleMania, it doesn't really get bigger than that. And just knowing the implications going forward, it means more now, looking back. So, very important WrestleMania. And an overall letter grade... 
I'm going to give this WrestleMania a B plus. It had a great card top to bottom. You know, the opener kind of fell flat, but everything else was great. You know, you had great storylines going into this, great hype. Like, this was a WrestleMania that you look forward to. Um, so, yeah, B plus for me, a great WrestleMania, and one of the most important. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts down below. This has been the DVD Freak. Peace out.